All right, welcome to the Jack of All Trades training channel where I prepare you for your certification exams one topic at a time. Today we're going to be looking at level one math, so some just some basic kind of math uh, conversions and decimal forms and uh, things that you might see on your certification exam. So let's dive in. All right, in this first question, there are six pieces of hot rolled steel, each three and three eighths inches long. Then they're to be cut from a bar that is 26 and three quarter inches long. Um, so after we've cut all those pieces, what is the length left of the original bar or how much of that original bar remains? And we have to assume that we have 1 16th of an inch for the saw blade cuts. So as with all of these questions, the first thing that I do if I'm writing an exam is to grab my scrap piece of paper and draw a little diagram of what we're looking at. Okay, now that we have our diagram driven, drawn up here, we have 26.750, which is 26 and three quarter. We have our three and three eighths or 3.375. And then I converted our 1 16th inch cuts to 0 0.0625 or 0 0.063, depending on how accurate you want to be. So this is really just an order of operations type question, where we're going to take our original length and we're going to subtract it by six, three and three eighths pieces and six uh, 1 16th cuts. So we'll write it like this, 26.750, and I'm going to just put it in brackets just to keep everything nice and tidy. Uh, and then we're going to take away 6 times 3.375, and then we're going to also take away 6 times um, 0 0.0625. Uh, Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll take, this one is already uh, simplified. I'll simplify each one of the brackets and I'll just kind of work through and figure this out. So what I'm left with is 6.125 or 6 and 1 eighth. Okay, our next question, we're going to change 7.83 degrees into degrees, minutes, and seconds. So 7.83 degrees. The first thing that we have to do when we look at these questions is understand how we, how we look at what, what the degrees, minutes, and seconds actually means. So in a regular circle where... Everybody, I think hopefully everybody knows that from the center point all the way around, we have in a, of a circle, we have 360 degrees. But the part that is as well known is that each one of these degrees, if we take one degree and then we zoom in on it, so we'll take it and we'll actually kind of zoom in on where, where we're looking at the outside radius, that's, if that's the outside radius of the circle. And let's say that this is one degree coming in here that that one degree actually can be divided up or the unit that we use to divide it up is that it divi gets divided up into 60 minutes. So one degree can be divided into 60 minutes. Now I just, that's not 60 lines. I'm just kind of just doing diagrams. And then each one of those minutes, if we zoom in on it, if we look at each one of these, um, I try to do this as accurately as I can. So if we look at that, and then we have our, that's our degree. And then we have each of our minutes. Then we can go even further and we can actually take each one of those minutes and we divide that up into seconds. Okay, so there's uh, 60 minutes per degree and there's 60 seconds per minute. Okay, just like uh, like a clock. So, uh, so it's kind of an easy way to do it. but. It's tricky when we have it like this, where we have 7.83 degrees, how do we transfer that into the more um, trades related where we're looking at it and we're trying to figure out how many degrees, how many 
minutes and how many seconds. So let's start. Um, we're going to start by looking at um, the 7.83. So the first thing to figure out how many degrees it is, is to look at our circle and we can say here, we're going to go, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven degrees. So seven degrees is probably somewhere like that. So we have seven degrees. And if we take our 7.83, and now we've put our seven degrees up here, and what we're left with is um, 0 0.83 degrees. So that's kind of like our decimal, like what's left over. So if we have 0.83 degrees, we have to now transfer 0.83. We have to figure out how many minutes of a degree 0.83 is. So if what we have to do that, we just go um, 0.83 and we times it by 60. And that's going to tell us how many minutes we have left. 60.83 or 60 times 0.83 is um, 49.8, okay? So we can go in and we can say, okay, we have, uh, after our seventh degree, we have point, or 49 uh, minutes left. So we take our 49 and we're going to plug our 49 in there. And then what we have left is we have still, if we take that away and we plug that in, now we have uh, 0 0.8 minutes. So we need to convert this into how many seconds we've got left. So again, to do that, we just take our 0 0.8 minutes and we times it by 60. And what we get left is we have 48 seconds. So we take our 48 seconds and we plug it in here. So 7.8. 83 degrees is 7 degrees, 49 minutes, and 48 seconds. All right, now this question, we're going to find the total change in diameter of an 8-inch long shaft if the taper per foot is 0 0.06 or 0.625. So again, first thing I'll do is draw a picture. So really what we're trying to find here is the change per the change in diameter from here to here and the way to do that is to take this eight inches and we figure out how many feet it is um, so i'm redoing really this video somebody pointed out that i made this mistake last time i got to figure out how many feet if if i know that my taper per foot is uh, 0 0.625 inches i need to figure out how many feet the length of the taper actually is so eight inches and I said it was three quarters of four. It's not three quarters, so thank you. Uh, eight inches equals two thirds of a foot. Okay, so two thirds of a foot times 0.625, which is five eighths. So I'll take it and I'll go two thirds times five eighths, and that's going to tell me um, how much of a change I'm going to get in a fraction form. Another way that I can do this is 0.666 repeater. I think the repeater goes above times 0.625. And that's going to tell me the change. And the change, the answer to that, the change would be 0 0.417 inches. So that's going to be the, how much the diameter changes from here down to there. Okay, so before I get on to this last question, uh, I'd like to ask everybody to please like and subscribe and hit notifications for any of these videos. I'm going to be sending out these videos. It looks like this is a go. I got very positive feedback from this. So I'm going to be working very hard to try and get as many of these videos out as possible before the end of, uh, before the, end of the year. I want to at least cover level one. Uh, and hopefully I can get through all the levels. It all depends on uh, how much time I have. Uh, the more likes and more subscriptions and more uh, attention this generates, the more time I'm going to probably allocate towards this. Uh, I've got a lot of things on the go, but um, this could definitely be a priority. I think it, there's a lot of value in helping people review in uh, their own time from home as opposed to, uh, you know, going into class and doing it or, or doing it a different way. So just, uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, and um, yeah, let's get into this last question. The last question is to write 4.7% as a decimal. 
So just in general, the way that I always think about this is 100% in decimal form is 1. Okay, so the, the difference is that 100 and 1 is where the decimal is located. So whatever the percentage is, we're going to just move the decimal over 2. So if I have 90%, for example, then we have 0 0.90. Okay, I took the decimal and I rolled it over twice. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky, is if I have 9%, the way to write that as a decimal it would be, again, to move the decimal over two spots, right, to something like that. So what that looks like is 0 0.09. And then finally, if I have a, a, a tenth of a percent or, or much less of a percent, so let's say I have 0.9%, um, again, I want to move that decimal over, and what that looks like is 0 0.009. Okay, so again, I'm moving the decimal over twice and then putting plugging that number in. So the conversion between decimals and percentage is just moving the decimal over twice. So 4.7 as a decimal, if I look at it and I say 4.7%, and I want to write that as a decimal, I need to move that over twice, and I have 0 0.047. So this is the 4.7. I will do it in a different color. This is the 4.7 decimal, and I moved it over twice. Okay. If you're going the other way and you want to take a number, so let's say we have another number and we will have 0. Um, 0.87, and we want to turn that into a percentage, then you just go the other way. So 0. 0.87, we're going to move the decimal over one, two spots. So 0. 0.87 is actually 87%. Right, 1.125 would be 112.5%. Okay, so you just see see the name of the game here. We're just moving the decimal over two places, and that's all you really need to do to convert between uh, decimals and, and percentage. Hope you enjoyed this video. There's more coming. Um, we're starting off a little bit slow with some math and, and uh, mechanical advantages and some of that stuff. And then we're going to be getting into safety. We'll get into tools, power tools, and um, all the measuring and all the stuff that you'd see in a uh, level one program. And we'll work through all the level one stuff. And once we're through all of that, I'll get onto the level two, level three, and level four. So even if you're a fourth level apprentice or um, just looking to review and go over some of this material, um, make sure that you're, you're tuned in and subscribed so that when I get to that point, you're going to be able to see and have that whole length of content to review for your, your Red Seal exam.